Well, hello and, and welcome to a long play game. And I haven't played one of these for a long time. Uh, luckily, I found an opponent and I'm going to try out the new Jabava London system, uh, which I've just done a new course for Chessable, which is a, a much more improved uh course than what i did for ginger gm as in you know a lot of things have developed it's bigger it's more detailed and a lot more work's gone into it i mean the one i did for ginger gm i'm still very proud about but this one you can get 50 percent off for the next nine days i think uh will give you an opening you can play for life so i'm the idea of london jabava the first three moves you play like this by placing the bishop on f4 so i'm going to do this i even give some little lines in the french defense that are, are are playable just in case you don't necessarily like the the setups you get here but again i'm just going to follow in this game the repertoire that i recommend uh, above and this is stage one of the london jabava now normally you play e3 next um, which I'm probably going to do because we're just going to stick with our, our general setup. Now e4, I can play, but he might play d5. So you know what? I'm just going to play this. This is like stage one of the London Jabava because you just get very nice development. Now, a couple of questions I have. Uh, people say it's the Verisoft. No, it's not the Verisoft where you put the bishop there. Completely different. Little subtleties make a big difference. The London system, it is a bit like the London, but it's not because you don't have a pawn on c3 you have a pawn on c2 and it's a very interesting new opening it's very solid but i mean lo lots of top players have been playing it now magnus on multiple occasions has tried it and um a number of other players um top players richard rapport jabava of course karyakin have been trying this opening out okay so we can now just continue developing in standard fashion so I'm going to put the bishop on d3 and the rule i talk about in the course is that the bishop's much better on d3 um rather you know when black hasn't played g6 my opponent hits this one so again i'm going to continue developing actually in the way that you would do uh, in the normal london system I'm actually now thinking i mean when you when i'm talking you play i play a lot worse than when i'm not talking and i'm actually thinking here after b6 why didn't I play Queen F3? You know, had I just been thinking a bit more, I'd have played that move, which is a much more aggressive way of playing. Okay, well, still, uh, this is a fine position. And I think uh, um, now I could castle kingside, but I want to make it as interesting as I can. Uh, I guess he's going to go C5 here. So I'm now thinking E4 might be... It looks like I've lost a bit of time. I'm going to go queen e2 first so I control that square and I can castle queenside. But I'm thinking e4 now might work. So if he goes d5, I'll go e5 and his bishop then will be very bad. And I've got I've got a bit better development here. So I think queen e2 makes makes quite a lot of sense in this position. And this again, it, it's the opportunity of having the knight here does give me this extra castles queenside idea. And I think I'm going to go for this one. Uh, other ideas that may be quite intriguing there was even g4 sacrificing a pawn uh, okay so i think now e4 is, is really the move I'm, I'm feeling or castles queenside first castles queenside c5 i take there and then play e4 okay well let's let's we don't have to play it yet so let's get one more moving let's show him what my intentions are uh, I'm going I'm going for it so okay so I'm just going to now try to start some kind of attack based on these kind of pawn pushes maybe even Harry should come into play get h4 in and attack him on h7 uh, so yeah so one reason I haven't done many YouTube videos recently is it's just time I've been doing this course uh, I've done a couple of courses for Chessable which has taken so much work to do now that the course is out i've got to do a little bit more stuff but i generally have more time to uh to do youtube do some streams and, and hopefully get you some good free content um you know if you do want to support me in any way then buying that is is a very good start i get a good percentage chessboard very fair and um i'm very proud of that i, I think that course is going to be 
not easier to learn than a lot of other like, like the Dutch course. The Dutch course is a very good course, but this Jabava London system is very simple. So it will suit a lot of people who maybe don't have a lot of time to, to learn all the intricacies of technical lines. This is so much easier to learn and it's an opening that will last you a lifetime. Okay, so my, my first thought against this was to take and play E4. But I'm now wondering if I can just play E4 straight away. Let's try this one. Interesting position here. I, I don't know how to assess this one. I've played quite risky, risky chess here. And, you know, my, my main thing is to go here and try to attack on, on H7. Maybe I can consider playing like E5, H4, and the Greek gift with Knight G5 coming, taking with the H pawn. So I'm just going for super aggression. If he takes here, I take with my knight and we get some weird Sicilian light position. So it's a very unique position. It's a lot of fun to play. Um, and he's going for it on this side. Oh, don't do that. I don't want to leave. So c4 is a threat. So I think now I have to make sure I keep my bishop on this square. I don't want him chasing it away. This is my star piece as it often is in the London system. And now it's already getting quite interesting. Bishop takes here. If I go e5, my bishop becomes fantastic. And I might have the Greek gift already. Let's try it. So I might, I don't need to have a pawn on h4 here. I might actually be able to just come in with knight g5. So for example, knight d5, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop h7, king takes h7, knight g5, and queen h5. So this is this is looking very risky for him already. I've just got measures saying he's, he's disconnected, which would be a nightmare. I mean, we can put the rest of the game on the computer and see the opening stage. Um, I did record one video before this, but the sound, my sound, things are all over the place. I only realized that after 40 minutes. So, and I can't spend another, I can't, I just can't spend another hour recording YouTube video at the moment. Uh, so I'll probably, you know, if he does disconnect, oh, he's reconnected. Whew, thank goodness for that. I, you know, I don't like winning by disconnections. I, it's more about the ideas I'm thinking of here, some general tips. And one thing we will certainly do after this is disconnected again, is we're gonna have a look at this, um, on the computer and see maybe what I should have done in the opening. I already know that, uh, like I said, I probably shouldn't put the knight on f3. I know this from the other London system ideas. So anyway, one of the questions a lot of people have asking you about the Jabava London, so I'll just answer some of those questions now in this new course. The most common one is a lot of you have probably brought my, I mean, what move is that? That's, that's just a bad move. I mean, I, I, I wish I could give him a take back. I think he disconnected and just had to play a move. Oh, that's, that's spoiled this a bit. But maybe he saw the Greek gift coming and he, he thought, oh, I'm losing against that one. Um, so I, I think I'm just going to simply take the knight now. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, one of the most common questions was how does this course differ from what I did for uh, Ginger GM with Blair? And the main difference is that simply it's a lot bigger, a lot more detailed. It has any latest theory in it. I've dealt with all queries that you've asked me about the first DVD that I did for Ginger GM. So the Bishop B4 stuff, I've looked at that. I've looked at anything I can think of and it's just a much better product to be honest. And you know, it, it, that's why the price point is, is a little bit higher uh, for it. Um, but I'm very proud of it and it's 10 hours of videos which give you the explanation or it's only 30 pounds for the whole of my work that I've done and, and the good thing is look it's a lot of money to spend but once you brought this course as white you know if you like the Jabal of London you won't honestly have to buy or look at any opening ever again if you don't want to so it's perfect for those of you who um, have a bit of a busy schedule uh, and just don't have the time to spend all their lives looking at different opening variations. It's a lifetime opening. Okay, so my bishop is attacked and got to be a little bit careful here. If bishop g5, for example, bishop takes f3 is, is annoying. Do I have any tactics there? Because queen takes, he takes here with check. 
bishop g5, bishop takes here, bishop takes here, bishop takes here. And then if I take here, he will take here and actually then be a pawn up. So that's not working. Bishop takes here, bishop here, bishop takes there. Any tricks with this check? No. So this this is not the right way to play. I mean, you just got to be a little bit careful. I mean, moving the bishop, I think, is the simplest to play. He's got this weird move, bishop a3. But I don't really believe it. Maybe then I should go bishop d2 just to defend this. And I want to play knight e4 next. This is this is the safest. When you're a, when you're a piece up, uh, you've got to be careful still. It's still very hard to put the ball in the back of the net, but it's okay to play sort of overly safe. And I just saw he had this potential of bishop a3, which he now can't really play because I can simply take it and I don't have to worry about queen takes c3. And my main idea for my next move is to put something, probably the knight, on e4. If he plays d5 to stop that, then I can go bishop g5, which traps the queen, um, because he can't take on f3. So I think just the positional move, knight to e4, forces more pieces to be exchanged. I material up, so this has to be the right strategy. I'm going to get rid of one of his bishops uh, in, in, in this position here. So knight to e4 looks correct. Another thing I've done, guys, recently, I, I've messed around like all morning. I spent like four or five hours trying to sort out the sound. Then I did this video and realized the sound wasn't on uh, or it was distorting. I've tried to get the pitch quality as high as possible. Um, I still think there might be some sound issues. So I'm going to have to really get an expert to sort these things out. Hopefully it's watchable and the sound is not jumping. But any feedback, do tell me. And I'll again spend a lot of time just trying to get, I want to get these videos as good as possible. Uh, when I recorded for chess, chess ball, they were, obviously, but they got sound technicians, editors, they do all the work with. I don't have any of that for YouTube. Okay, so now I can simply take here. I still have this fantastic bishop. I can even play ideas like this, but again, simple is good. You're a piece up. You can just go for uh, exchanges in the position. And knight takes here. If he takes with the pawn, I could swap off more pieces. Might be other ways to play, but you don't need to risk it when you material up. Exchange pieces off because you get rid of lots of tactics. Um, I mean, saying that, I'm still wondering if I can play this move now. I'll have to calculate. Bishop takes, king takes, knight g5. Oh, I feel I might not be able to resist this one. The typical Greek gift, king back, queen h5. But he's going to run this way, no? So let's calculate. We have to calculate in chess sometimes. Lazy people don't calculate. You can't calculate in blitz. But if you want to become a chess player, you have to. <laughs> I wanted to have an easy ride in this game. So takes, takes. Knight g5. And let's now first look at his king going back to g8 then. My queen comes here threatening check and checkmate. So he has to give himself this square. He has to move his queen. Queen f6, therefore, looks best to me. Then I have bishop c3 ideas. But then he has queen g6 ideas. So bishop c3, queen g6. So I'll get rid of some of that. Just try to, try to play along. This is a very important skill calculation that you can only do through hard work. It's, it, you know, it's very hard work calculating that. It's a difficult maths problem. So bishop takes h7. King takes knight g5. King here, queen here, queen f6. Critical position. And in that position, if I can't see something that's winning, then I should not be sacrificing my piece. You only sacrifice if you see something concrete. It feels to me like there might be something there, but I can't see it. If I check there, he goes here. And if I check here, he comes here. Can't see it. So takes, takes. I'm going to give up on this line soon because I don't need to play it. Knight check, king here. Queen here, queen f6 is a good defensive move. 
his queen can defend and attack. Bishop c3, queen g6. I don't see it. I don't see how I do it. So, okay, so I'm going to give up on that idea. I can always go back to this one. Let's not forget, but I... I I now think that I don't need to play this and I, I want to want to really go for it somehow. So I could go h4 first. This might give me more attacking possibilities in, in those lines that we saw. And we know how much I like h4. I might even be able to get the rook around, mainly to g3. So h4 is now becoming my my next favorite move this is the simple move to be honest if i was playing in a fee day rated tournament where it really mattered i'd probably just go here without thinking swap 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 win the ending but i'm going to play h4 now because another skill you can use when you don't have a great deal of time i mean i know i've got eight minutes but i still not as much time as you might want sometimes is i can use his time to calculate so now let's look at this again takes takes knight here check King g8, queen here, queen f6, key position. But his king is coming this way. And there's nothing I can see there that's doing it. So this is a, this is a good move. It gains space. I might just go knight here anyway now. And it feels like it gives me this extra potential to defend the knight. Okay, so he's, he's bringing his knight around to defend which is fine. Um, and now the other idea I had in mind behind this was bishop c3. Then I really should be threatening this. The knight here though stops the Greek gifts because if I play this Greek gift idea, he always has the, the knight coming to f6. Um, I mean, again, I should probably just, just do this simple move, but you know, as we know, I don't really want to play this one. I want to go for mate. Okay, let, let's go rook h3. We'll go, we'll go to the secondary plan. If he goes knight f6, then I was hoping I could go bishop here, but then c4 takes on f6, takes on d3, takes on e7, takes on e2, rook e1, on a piece up, and I should be safe there. So if he goes here, I might I might just start taking things off then. Actually, but if I go, actually, so if I go here, he goes here, I take here, he takes here, I go here, he goes queen f4 check. I still have knight d2, so I'm still winning there. Uh, but it's not quite as nice as it, as it was. Um, so this is what happens when you, you, you try to keep pieces on for the attack when you shouldn't be doing it. Going against my own principles, but, you know, otherwise it was, it was a bit too easy. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just go c3 so my bishop can drop back. So I, I give it an extra square. And I'm going to, I mean, I, I've started now. I might as well just keep on plodding. I might as well just go rook g3 and keep going uh, with, with, with this idea here. Uh, and the extra pieces, I mean, it's a good extra piece. The dark square bishop is a nice piece here. I mean, I can also, oh, no, well, that's not a, that's not a pre-move that's ever going to happen. So I don't need to worry about that. I've lost some games of pre-moves before, as you're probably aware of. Okay, so he's trying to open me up over there, but it doesn't really deserve to work. Um, so now, well, knight here springs to mind just to control c4 and get my knight to what looks like a more aggressive square. Let's go for that one. It's not really doing much there, and I'm not going to g5 anymore. So this square looks good. I mean, I'm controlling c4. So if he ever goes c4 and tries to open things up, I've got a lot of pieces control controlling that. If he ever takes here, I'll take my bishop. My bishop seems quite nice. And my rook is aiming to come to g3, I think, very shortly when I'm hoping to get some good chances against g7 and maybe against h7. And the knight here is a good piece, isn't it? Knight's in the center of the board. Uh, it's often where the knight belongs in the center of the board. Now, by the way, if you think I'm crouching back, because I've been doing, okay, grab some pawn, but I'll go here without thinking. If, you, if I am sort of a bit more like slumped, it's because I've got, I've been using, I've been doing this course for chessboard and 
working so much with the mouse i'm starting to get a bit of a bad shoulder blade so i'm sort of keeping it rested at the moment it's not that i'm you know incredibly bored it's just that i need it rested when i was a kid actually i dislocated my shoulder once so then um i think for the next sort of five to six years i dislocated so much i probably dislocated about 150 times and i, I would have to like put it back in my myself so i think it's a long-term problem from dislocating it okay so here i'll go c4 it means my bishop can't come to the square but when you're attacking every tempo counts and yeah he's grabbed the pawn but that really doesn't worry me because now i can get another piece into the attack he's gonna have to play g6 and i would be amazed if i can't sacrifice in that position something on g6 so for example if he moves his bishop back otherwise he loses it i'm gonna go rook g1 this one is very dangerous he goes g6 let's play it on the board this is not doing anything i mean taking there straight away was that was that a sacrifice worth considering should have considered it takes king takes something like bishop h6 there oh i should have gone for glory shouldn't i king to h8 and the attack looks dangerous but i couldn't see a breakthrough this is probably a better move because if he goes g6 i can take there probably or the other option which is not just as good if not better is just going h5 when i can take on g6 and i don't even have to sack a piece so his king is going to be ripped apart and this knight just helps this attack against his king side also my queen now can get in the game because there's no piece there in the way so he's gone back and this is really now should be a winning combination here so my first thought is can i go for some magic with this king takes queen here check king here should be some magic here I've got lots of sacrificial ideas. Okay, so bishop takes here, king takes, queen here check, king to g8. Another piece lurks near his king. But I can't see a finish in that position. This one, knight takes. I have bishop h6 there. I mean, I have bishop h6 here as well, but this could be even stronger takes takes bishop h6 he can't stop me taking there i'm looking for something a bit more glorious than that though i mean i also have queen here in this position but that's it's not as fun he can go f5 and try to block up my bishop then you know i should be looking for violent moves here because i've got every piece attacking his king piece so even if i lose one i'm still all right there should be something glorious here I mean, rook g7 looks best, but let's just go back to this one. Takes, takes, I'll get my queen in, but his king comes back. Is there nothing there? If I go queen h6, he goes f6. Queen is a good, good job of defending there. So no, not bishop h7. So rook takes here. Bishop h6 is probably what I'm going to play, but I just want to see if there's a better move. Takes, 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 takes check king h8 very close to winning bishop here f6 must be something there okay well it looks like rook takes g7 is is, is this, this is my simple combination to take go here next move but I'm just going to make it a little bit more easier for me to calculate by playing the first move. I see that I have a win in hand with this move, and I want to play a violent move. So this has to be my first move. And now I can just calculate this one a bit more. See if we can get some uh, magical finish. Takes, takes, check, king h8. I just need to get rid of his queen then. How do we do that? If I take his knight and sack another piece well bishop here he has to play f6 but that is as far as i can tell okay for him do i now have this one no don't think so 
takes 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 check he can always go to this square as well oh he can't because i've got check yeah, okay so takes 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 check king here check here king to g8 i haven't got many pieces left in that position i've got to draw we obviously don't want to draw this as bishop h6 is winning i'm just trying to look at some fantasy variations you see that if i literally just keep sacking everything bishop h7 takes takes check uh, king h8 check king g8 probably don't have enough pieces in that position bishop g5 f6 again so i think i might have to play bishop h6 and just play the boring win <laughs> boring win still a win isn't it uh in this position okay i think so i think i think this is this is uh this is what i'm gonna have to settle with uh i mean again i, I i'll be gonna put this on the computer afterwards see we'll check out what, what the computer thinks of the opening and we will uh also um he keeps re he keeps uh, requesting a private chat like some chat room it's not a dating app you know uh, i don't really want to chat i'm talking my friend you know as, as much as it's a, a pleasure to play you um uh, and thank you for being an opponent around the same rating as me my ratings dropped a bit actually uh it's, it's you know i'm gonna, gonna have to try to and i think this is unrated as well typical typically unrated against someone who's got a pretty decent uh, thing I, I mean I, I think he just played I mean he just got in a bit of a horrible opening the, the Jabbar for London works incredibly well okay anyway I, I what I will do I'm going to keep trying to do some more long play videos over the next uh, week because I'll try to make up for it and I'm going to try to play white in as many as, the, as I can because for the next nine days and after that this is going to be a very expensive course but for the next nine days it's 50% off so you know I want to show you how deadly the Jabbar of London can be and how easy it is to learn by practicing it myself against many opponents so that's why I'm going to try to you know just encourage you to because I, I think I really do think it's a good bargain at 50% off you get all the videos 10 hours of videos and all the files and it's not PGN files Chessable has their own training uh, thing you should know about Chessable by now Magnus has just brought shares in them a big company and um that's why i thought it might be worth trying to do some stuff for them but they've got a very interesting way of of doing stuff and i think it's a very good i mean you know i only try to work for companies that i believe in and i, I do believe in them and I, I really like what they're doing and their team is fantastic they're all so professional and they're so hard workers and grafters which i really appreciate so i'll try to show you why i think it's a good price so i think it's 50 dollars. it's a lot of money don't get me wrong but i promise you when you've like obviously uh watched all the videos for that and learned it you will have an opening you never need to change for the rest of your life so i kind of think like 50 dollars and i would say 12 hours of your life to look at the files look at the videos to have an opening that will do you well forever chess is not easy you're not going to find a better deal than that it is simply impossible simply impossible okay so now i can just start taking things off and i'm going to be doing very well so let's let's try to do it this way shall we um as i have some big discovered attack and with three pieces still attacking he won't better defend here so we, we just we can just bring him in there's not not too much that needs thinking about here king here is his best move and then i even have knight here and knight here if i want to start mopping up uh more pieces you know this is this is a nice nice way to to win something you can't go here or here because knight to f7 is checkmate so this is this is pretty much forced do i have anything else if he goes here can i take here he takes my knight i like my knight i don't really want to lose my knight it's a good knight so maybe here check king 
somewhere king e7 i always have queen g7 this is the simplest way to win just just win let's just keep it simple now i've had i've had a bit of fun i'll try to i'll try to keep some attacking chances when i wouldn't have done that in a real game when i say a real game if you're playing in a competition you, you you've got to be methodical and you don't want to you don't want to risk things so you know this is a bit a bit risky the way i played okay so we go for this one and the queen may enter in or i may just go here and say thank you it's getting near resignation times my friend okay well first of all we're coming here i might as well keep that king running some more can he save his rook like let's say he goes king here i'll go here he goes king rook here i can i can always check him on g3 so he has rook here i see but then i just take this one so this is this is easily winning if i win a rook i'm going to be like a queen for i mean if i win each, another more material i'm going to be even more up and the point is if he goes rook here this is one good move check so he, yeah he has to resign so thank you thank you for the game there sir okay well um hopefully the audio i've recorded this and it hasn't been too bad let's now have a look at, at the game and i think this is very interesting and what i'm doing here is what you should do at home to improve if you know if you get if you let's say you buy this course for example or some other course it doesn't have to be this one you watch the course how do you get better then play some long play games try out the opening see how much you remember and um if you keep forgetting go back to the video and, and work out what you've done wrong so this is what we're going to do now i mean even if i won what i'd say is pretty okay game um i could probably have improved and we're going to see now where i could improve so let's let's get the and this is a great thing with chess.com you can whack it on the computer as you see me do many times before so my accuracy is not amazing there 92 percent, but it's not terrible so the jabava london system and e6 now in my original dvd for example i didn't talk about this a lot but in the new course you can buy i talk about this quite a bit i give bishop f4 as the main move but i actually also give a little line with e4 uh, a little french idea just to you know just to try to give you as much of a hold of the variation as i can now i think a6 seems like a strange move and here e3 is perfectly okay now b6 now this position if i had this position again i'd certainly go queen to computer is already saying this is best because i get nice control over the file and i can castle queen side immediately with a very fun position so this this seems to be an idea i i, I you know i would play okay but let's have a look so i mean even if the computer says this is about even you know when you play openings with white nearly every opening with correct play is going to be even it's just if you like the positions or not and i like this position more for white because i feel i have more attacking chances and we had now me playing this idea with castles queen side which the computer doesn't like but it looks like fun to me so I, i'm not going to listen to the computer and it's funny that these are my two only inaccuracies really you know if you look at the rest of the moves it doesn't say that okay so here e4 played b5 he should have gone d5 there but had he played d5 i would have played e5 what am i missing here what it says now he plays here but now i go h4 setting up a great gift what's the computer going to give here and this is quite dangerous for him you know oh look at it now look how it's changed its mind it's not really sure what the hell's going on it it's a draw so you know computer you know gm the gm could be right so b5 and now i play takes and the problem is okay this is a big blunder yeah of course but i think my position is already good the openings work very well and the problem is after this move he's in serious trouble because if he plays knight to d5 i think i can do the greek gift i can just take here and now play this common idea here and he has to really take and i go here check and this position is 
completely winning for me, plus 6.45. So that's why he had to give the piece up. So obviously I'm winning with a Jabava, and it's an excellent move, but it's plus nearly four pawns for me. So it's not that bloody excellent, is it? It's completely losing for you. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we go on, and I just swap off. Now h4, it says, is good. Uh, I mean, so the first thing was, this is what I wanted to play, but I don't think it works now. Oh, it says it's excellent. Ah, what did I miss here? Wow, I could have played this. So I got to the position in my analysis where black plays queen to f6. And here I did not see anything clear, so I did not play it. But the computer says I can check and... Unfortunately, it's kings coming here, so I just didn't see that much further. But it says I can just simply play this move, and I'm completely winning with ideas of knight here. This is this doesn't seem obvious to me, does it to you? I mean, blooming heck, this is a bit more, a bit hard. You know, I, I mean, I've given up a piece, and I, I play this calm move. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna forgive myself for for not spotting that idea. Uh, but okay, uh, you know, at least my instinct was right. So I play h4, uh, and now knight here. Okay, I played rook h3. These are all good moves, according to the computer. I play c3, so I got this square for my bishop. Uh, oh, he plays an excellent move, but it's too late. All my moves are quite logical. And this is a very, very greedy move. And let's just see a little bit later on if I could have won in more style. So did I play the best move now? Well, I took here. It says it's best. Okay. Now, did I play the best move here? No. And again, my instinct was correct. I wanted to take it. Ah. So let's have a look. How was this winning? And I wanted to play here. Now, I saw here that he only has one move, king h8. Because if he goes here, I, ha I, I saw I have checkmate with this one. Look at my knight, fantastic piece. And if he goes here, I have checkmate with this one. So he has to go here. And now this is a position you could maybe heard me analyzing. And I was trying to make some idea of getting this queen out the way it works. So like bishop here, but I only saw this move f6. And I thought here that Oh, f5 is best. I'm actually winning here because of queen h5. Wow. And this is winning, even though I'm a lot of pieces down here. And if here, I just win the queen. Okay. And the point it actually is that the computer's making is if I actually play queen h5 straight away, he can't move his f pawn because if he does to defend against mate, I go here and I win his queen anyway. So this position is actually winning that's a pity i could have won in a more stylish way in the game though uh it was good enough wasn't it so in the game we had this standard attack and this standard attack is pretty good plus nine a solid plus nine there and we can we can deal with a solid plus nine and he's completely lost here he hasn't got enough material Right, well there we go. So that, you know, back to doing long play video and, and thanks for watching that. I'm gonna try, like I say, to play more of the Jabava London. Uh, and I'm hoping now, you know, it's on sale for the next 10 days. So obviously I'm gonna be pushing it a bit over those 10 days. That's where you make any, you know, and hopefully that will give me enough cash to then concentrate and do more streams and free stuff. And, you know, if you do wanna support me, do buy the course. Like I say, it's only on 50% off for the next nine days. You get a money back guarantee anyway. Um, other things that are going on. Well, Ginger Jim released, uh, a, I, we released a course that me and Fiona presented. So I'm going to be talking about that more, you know, uh, soon. Uh, very good course on fundamentals. And there is a Blitz event that Ginger Jim are running on the 23rd of November, but it's invitation only. So you must try to get an invitation. But if you know me or I know you through my streams, you can try sending me an email to see if you if there's a place, if you can make it on that day. Can't promise anything. There's not much room already, but that's going to be a fun event. But, you know, uh, think about buying that course. There's going to be a free video on it going up soon. 
and it's 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 bound to give you a great opening with white and if you don't like it just get your money back you know <laughs> that's what i would do but you won't do that will you okay well cheers thank you all for watching this one and hopefully I'll, i now have some more time to create some more content for you that will help your game and that you find enjoyable so goodbye for now